Welcome, everyone, one and all, to the first episode, the very first one of the Disc Only Podcast. Welcome to the Disc Only Podcast, the very first episode of it. Nothing else has happened before this. Never, ever. My name is Proton John, and I'm done with life. Um, <laughs> my, my name is Tom Fox, and I can't believe that it is the year of our Lord 2020, and we just got Game Boy Player Disc Only as part of the cookie. God, I wish. I'm so excited. My, I'm Steven, just very excited to do the first episode of Disc Only. And also the fact that no one's ever been gas light lighted and no one's ever died. And uh, I'm Jared, and I I thought there was going to be like a game on this disc. Like I had no idea it was just going to be the title screen. No, that's it. You no. can press some buttons and it does a couple things. That's about it. We hit the land. You can, of... you can change the uh, the the the, bear, the like border. The, the border. Yeah. I, I can press yeah. a button and it does this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I'm Tom. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> do do, do y'all remember the count that happened at uh, TRG Coliseum? Like how many it was? I'm pretty sure it was over 100. How many times did we play the intro? Yeah, yeah. It was like 125, yeah, it was, 150, somewhere in that range. The, it was the, like, during, the actual during disc only segment was like 76. Yeah, it was like 70 or 80 something. Yeah. God. I, I fear, dude, di disc only. The well, that was the pilot. This is the first episode. That was like the, <laughs> that was three the month long pilot. We were in beta the entire time. Oh, yep. yeah, the, the uh, you know, the, just thinking back to like that that year of like Coliseum 2020, it was a long time coming of getting Game Boy Player Disc only as a as a game played between like between the both of you, right? Or was it just you're trying to get Steven to play it, John? Originally, we were just trying to get Steven to play it, and then it kind of became a back and forth thing. Like, Steven was technically getting some sort of revenge for us accidentally breaking his stream. <laughs> and I was just there. I was just along for the ride. I'm like, oh, cool. It's going to be a game. I didn't know there were, like, games on it. <laughs> I was very incorrect. No, I mean, this is a game. It's just a very long one. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Running the long time like here. Years. Yeah, like three years of a freaking podcast. That's what the game became. It's a, it's a game where you can control the border so it's a game about border control <laughs> the only oh winning move is Steven. not to play they say accurate it's a very very surprising title <laughs> there is a i'm i'm shifting gears and going into a different topic that we've never talked about in disc only before food um <laughs> I went uh, lucid in, dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were dreaming. talking about Dragon Ball before we went live. Yeah, Dra <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm uh, just taking shots in the dark. Yu-Gi-Oh. No, there's a shop near me called uh, called Specs. It's like it's a liquor store. It's like half the size of a um of a grocery store, but they have like a small section in there that has like the best snacks ever. Like, if you ever get a chance to try Dot's homestyle pretzels or um. I think it's called Sweet Chaos Popcorn. Oh my god. Try it. it. They're so good. Like these these are just like let me see. These are just like like pretzel twists, but they've got like let me see what's on here. Have you never <laughs> oh, had great. Dots great, thanks. pretzels? I, I didn't know where they sold them. Oh well, my goodness. What are Dots pretzels? What? Uh Dots so it's like pretzels. they're they're pretzel they're like pretzel twists, but they got like um different like spices and like like onion powder and not whatnot on them. They taste great. Are you are you eating original? Original the season red, pretzel twist, the, yeah. The red the red bag. The red bag, yeah. Yeah, the red bag is, in my humble opinion, the best. There's also blue bag. And is that Cool Ranch? Blue blue bag is like southwestern, and then yellow bag is honey mustard, and they have purple bag now, which is like cinnamon. I saw the cinnamon one there too. I went with the original one because yesterday, um, I uh. My uh, my neighbors came over for the first time since I uh, moved in here, and uh, it was great. It was amazing. They're they like they're into all the same nerdy shit that I'm into, and it's it's like I hit the jackpot on neighbors. You know, I got two dogs. They're they're a little bit in your face to manatee, but I'm sure with time they'll uh, they'll get to know each other well. And it was great. And so I so I was like, cool. They're coming over for the first time. I want to make it special. So I went to Specs, and I got the dots 
homestyle pretzels and I got the uh, Sweet Chaos uh, black and white popcorn, which is just popcorn that's been drizzled with um, like a chocolate drizzle and a vanilla drizzle. And oh I God. also got like, I don't know what it's actually called. I just called them Lunchables because it's basically <laughs> it's basically like a light charcuterie board of uh, Ritz crackers, cheddar cheese and pepperoni. Uh, like the um, oh God, I can't remember the name of them. The uh, <laughs> I I was it's like, dude, it's like the Hormel brand of them. Yeah, yeah. Like me and Erica go through those. Man, we love those freaking. They're things. really good. <laughs> I, I remember I, whenever we did um the disc only group on John's stream that one time, and I was like, "Yo, I got some pros scuto." That's what I was eating was one of those. It was so good. Are your neighbors close in age to you? Mm hmm. See, that's cool. That's not been my typical <laughs> experience because. You li lived didn't in you Yeah, didn't you when basically live in a retirement community? Yeah, I mean, like when we lived in Myrtle <laughs> Beach, most. There are a lot of people that live in Myrtle Beach. Um, obviously, it's not everyone, but it, it seems to be where all the places we've lived, we had a lot of older folks around. Um, so I've never really had neighbors that were like my age, which I is mean, like it... fine. That's fine. So like... like, I don't, I generally don't want to know my neighbors. Like, I don't want to know them. They don't need to know me. Hmm. I can see them outside and I'll give them like the nod <clears throat> and that's it. <laughs> and maybe like the best thing, the, the best you'll get from them in terms of like playing video games with them is like, eh, can you set up the Wii bowling for us? <laughs> yeah, I, I I have I have zero interest in playing video games with any of my neighbors. It's fine. <laughs> however, however, the place that I'm living now. Aren't your parents technically your neighbors? No, they they they, they were nearby, but they weren't. They I wouldn't consider them my neighbors. Okay, but uh, when the, the the place we're living now is the best neighbor situation I've ever had, because we have Lebanese neighbors who are now at an arms race with us to see who can out-gift food to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the best neighbor situation I have ever had in my entire life. It That's is the... wonderful. That's I love that it's an also... arms race. I, I love... <laughs> my my favorite acts of kindness are always done at a spite. Like, <laughs> like they, they, they stopped by... Um, you know, within the first few weeks of us living here, and they brought us just a plate of uh lebanese food and i was like oh my god this is amazing this is so good so then mao made like cupcakes for them and then the other day they brought us cookies and i was like oh my god they brought us cookies so then mao made zucchini muffins mm. and then the other day they brought us like more cookies <laughs> and then also uh some I, I, they were trying they were describing what it was i don't know if they named it but there's it it's an arabic dish which it's got like bread and onions and um chicken on it it also had peanuts which was unfortunate for mal but great for me because i got to eat the whole thing myself <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, it's it's that this has been the best neighbors i've ever had well that's I've good had, there's been some times in my life i've had some some, bad, some really bad it's just it's just the, really the last neighbors. you're trying to get the last laugh and kindness by giving food to them hmm I remember when we lived in the apartment and we lived on the second floor, there was a an elderly couple um, that lived below us that were just nasty. Most most people I've met, real nice. That that couple, real nasty. And the, the thing that sucked is they would sit on their porch and smoke. And like, that's fine. That's like their God-given right to smoke. It just sucked because then we could never be on the porch <laughs> while they were smoking. Be, mm -hmm. be, yeah, well, they that they did that a lot. There was a lot of that. Um, and there was one <laughs> time I was I was out in the parking lot, and they were out there, and I don't even remember what the event was that happened. I don't know if I if my car door was too close to there. I don't know what it was. But I had done something to piss them off, like without knowing. And the lady unprompted was standing there, and she said. My husband is dying, and that's just all she said to me. And I was like, "Okay, but I didn't do it." Like, what? <laughs> what? 
Why? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, not sure what I can, what I can do to make that better. Anyway, I'm... then they went back to the porch and smoked until presumably he died. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're 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 uh, they're swiftly like pushing that along for sure. With that, uh, sure. death. Yeah, with smoking. Mm -hmm. Just overall. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 just like, I mean, like, I just thought just like over the course of time with them in particular. <laughs> well, I mean, they're they're um, they're they're speed running it with that. But there anyway, um, the uh, the neighbors that we have at our place right now, I'm actually really thankful for them because they were the ones who found blue whenever he was gone. Mm. Um, they they've they've been uh, fantastic. The people across the way, they they work on their yard so much, though, dude, their yard is like immaculate. And my yard is just like, oh, we got a couple of flowers. <laughs> like, like, we're nowhere near as uh, as pristine as they are. But they they make our house look so much like so much better. Even though like our house doesn't look bad, but we don't put nearly as much work as they do into it. It's it's nuts. So let me tell you something. Uh, my lawn is it's not great. I forget to water it often, so it's like it's it's brown and crusty in some areas. But um. On the day I went out to like to mow it, I had bought a, uh, a weed whacker, mm -hmm. just to, like kind of get the areas that the lawnmower can't can't really get into. And then I noticed that it had like this weird like it, it could like rotate and become like uh, become like a like uh, an edger. Yeah. So I started doing that, and I looked at my lawn afterwards, and it, it was like it was it was uh, you know barren and bleak and dry. But I noticed how clean the edges were on the sidewalk and the driveway, and I was like. <gasps> I finally understand lawn maintenance. <laughs> I I saw your I don't know if it was tweets or whatever um, where you were talking about getting into the the lawn maintenance thing, and I was just thinking Godspeed. Oh, you had texted me. That's right, you had texted me and you had asked what thing I had bought. Right, I was asking you about the uh, the the weird vacuum cleaner lawnmower you had, and you were just like, "Don't get it." Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> It was basic. So, if anyone has ever seen the little toys that children push that have the little balls that pop up in the dome, yeah, 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 yeah. it's basically the adult version of that. Um, I had bought that when we when we first moved into a into a home. I mean, we've always rented, but we we moved into a home and we had to do yard maintenance. Mal, at the very beginning, everyone in my life told me to just hire a company. Mal told me to hire a company. Chaz told me to hire a company. Haley told me to hire a company. Like, everyone in my life was like, you should just hire a company because, like, you're not going to do it or you're going to be bad at it or you're going to hate it. And I was like, Puh, I'll show you me, Stephen George, manly man. Who <laughs> Outdoorsman has extraordinaire. I have literally never cut the grass in my life because growing up, my dad loved cutting the grass, so he just did it. And I was like, I, I can do it. So I went online and I bought quite literally the cheapest thing that I could possibly buy. And there is a vlog. It is a very good vlog where I, I, I have this thing on the yard and it looks like I'm vacuuming the yard. It's it's pathetic. It was very bad. ridiculous looking. Because it was also it was plug in too, wasn't it? Like it wasn't it wasn't battery yes. powered. It was gas electric. Powered. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's just a very sad thing. Like I'm sure that the neighbors at that moment in time had witnessed me doing that and lost all respect for me oh, as a neighbor that, that... and as a human person. Wow, that George boy is very, uh, is, is very, very, uh, uh, like dirt, dirt phobic there. I'm noticing he's vacuuming his yard. <laughs> My God. So yeah, I, I did that. And then I was like, cause the whole time, the whole thing I did, I was like, Oh, I'm going to do this. So I don't have to buy like, uh, you know, a, a lawnmower and go through the whole rigmarole of that. I'm going to get something cheap. And, of course, it didn't work how I wanted it to. And even if it would have worked, like, my yard at the time was big. I'm sure it would have been fine if you had, like, like a tiny condo with a very small amount of yard that you had to maintain. But I had, like, a full yard. And in hindsight, that was very stupid. So <laughs> I had my comeuppance and was like, sure, we'll hire a company to do it. So we did, and they came and they did it, and it looked great. And I was like, "This, this, this is going to be the thing that I do." So I, to this day, I have not maintained any yard. I just get a company to do it. That is honestly the way to do it. I, mean, I got a, I, I got a buddy is... of mine who uh, he works for a company or whatever, like a landscaping company, and we're just like, "Yo, 
uh, we'll pay you to come over and do our house. We'll pay you good for it because I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last place that I was at whenever I was renting, um, they basically demanded that you did it. And I was just like, oh, okay. Uh, and uh, and because of the fact that it was the first time, other than my apartment, which the apartment was taken care of, uh, it was my first time. So I was like, I'll just go get myself a uh, like a push mower. I got one of those with like the rotating blade. Like not even like uh, electric yeah. or anything. It was just like a G -G -G -G, that type oh, of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually enjoyed the frick out of using that thing. But once the blade got dull, it was the most painful thing ever to go back and forth and back and forth. Cause like it just didn't cut anymore. And I was like, well, I got to go get a blade sharpener or whatever the frick it's called. So like a whetstone. So I did that and it just, it never worked as pristinely as when I first bought it. And it was, <laughs> I was so sad. <laughs> I couldn't do any maintenance on it. If you're going to, if you're going to hire somebody to sharpen the lawnmower, you might as well hire somebody to take <laughs> care of the lawn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like just get rid of the middleman at that point. I mean, it, it very quickly becomes like a, a, a sunk cost thing. Like if you're, if you're <laughs> yeah, the fallacy. Yeah, if if you're definitely if you're like, oh, I'm I can take care of the yard, and you start working on taking care of the yard, but then you have to like get additional equipment or you have to maintain the equipment. Um, also, there's the whole thing of like, you know, I, I, I I'm I'm a tall guy. I'm not a big guy. I'm not a very strong guy. It's gonna take me a long time to cut the the yard. <laughs> and it, it that time is time that I could be doing like other things. Uh huh. Um, so I think everyone's got like a, a part of their life where they have to just kind of admit defeat on something. And uh, that was me. That was me. <laughs> I, and I, I'm, I'm no longer too proud to admit that. I'm like, no, no, that's I can't do that. I'm this is a, an aspect of my life where I I really need to let someone else handle it because I'm better at other things. So I'll do those things. And play to, uh, I don't play to your strengths. I don't That's mind sure. paying someone to do that. That is okay. I will do that. The uh, the weed whacker was fun to use because it it uh like came with like this a, a little attachment on the front to like you know get a better grip on it. It's like holding a minigun. <laughs> it, it it I feel like heavy weapons guy just mowing down all the grass. I uh have any have any of y'all like uh either used or have owned a pressure washer before? Used yes, don't know. So I got I got a pressure washer um, whenever I was living at my old like rent in house, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, even though it would overheat because it was like a plug in one. And I was like, ah, oh, frick. So I was only able to use it for like ten minutes at a time, but I loved it. I did my my uh, the siding of my house. I did uh, like the 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 uh, what is it called the sidewalk outside the house and everything. And a week after I bought it. Somebody stole it off my front door. Oh no! <laughs> and I'm like, that's well, the worst. Well, I, I don't really know what I can do in this situation. Kind of sucks, but like, I didn't buy another one. I, that was like, that was like God telling me, "Hey, don't worry about it. You don't need a pressure washer. You know, like, you're all right. <laughs> See, I, you can get like, you can get somebody to clean the side of your house if you need to. I, don't get up I, on that ladder. I feel like it might be like genetic in my family because i'll i'll like after when i'm done mowing the lawn i'll like look outside and i'll see like oh this uh this this flower bed gets flooded easily so i need to i need to like replace all the mulch or like there's a lot of tire tracks on on my concrete driveway i should probably go ahead i should probably rent a power washer to take care of that like all these little projects that i'm formulating in my head that i haven't thought about since like i lived with my parents and i was like doing <laughs> outdoor chores for them and like, you know, in the places I rented, it's like, oh, the lawn's taken care of or like, oh, it's a rental. So like, I don't need to worry about that that much. But now I own the house. So now I'm just <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just like, I have to, this is, this house is, is my baby I th that I live in, oddly enough. So like, so I have to take care of it. Are well, you sure you, you weren't know, just bit by like a, like a wear? A gardener? radioactive dad? Yeah. Like that or a, <laughs> no, yeah, radioactive dad or a wear gardener, either one. <laughs> If at any point, you as, know, I, you... as I transform my jeans, turn into cargo shorts. Yeah. Hey, son, how's it going? You get the clip on freaking overalls, like everything. <laughs> like I'm transforming and someone's like, what's happening? I'm scared. And as I'm transforming, I'm like, yeah, I'm scared. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> you only talking dad jokes, man. Exactly. Just, just remember that it is okay at any point to give up people don't talk enough about giving up 
<laughs> and honest to God, we need to have a little more talks about. Get, there's a lot of like people out there saying you can do it. You can. Sometimes you can't, and it's okay to just give up. So, Tom, I, I want you to know that I'm I'm excited that you're excited. Are you and excited you... that I'm gonna give up at some point? <laughs> no, I'm excited that you're excited about your lawn. I'm excited that you're you're into it, and I want you to know that if at any point you're mowing the lawn and you get halfway through and you look around, and you're like, "What the hell am I doing?" That that's <laughs> okay. It's okay to just quit and just be like, "I'm gonna call a guy," and just I just want you to know that. And anyone listening right now, I, w- I want you to know it's okay to give up. Too many people are like, "No, you gotta try." No, sometimes you just give up. I'm not saying give up on everything. I'm just saying that there's times where you got to look at how much you're juggling and be like, I'm going to give this up. <laughs> Sometimes it's lawn care. Also, there, there, I mean, like, the grass there, there... can go to hell. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if I'll tell you one thing right now. When I finally own a damn home, I hope I get into a place that doesn't have an HOA so I can just pave the, the place. I don't need grass. Grass no. doesn't do me any good. Do no, wood no, chips no, no. or we, something. We, we, do do something that doesn't like absorb as much heat as concrete does. Yeah, go for, I'll uh, do. You gotta go for dirt. like a, uh, like a or, um, desert landscaping, like minimal yeah. minimal. Uh, what is it? Minimal maintenance, and it's just like and it's just like oh, it's like oh, sweet. Yeah. I got a cactus in my front yard. We got we have <laughs> friends in Tucson, and I love their yard. I'm like I wouldn't want to trip in this yard because I would die, but. <laughs> As far as like the the yard maintenance is like this is wonderful. Just dirt. Just throw some dirt on it. Like I would oh like to God. do I would like to do like a little like a, a garden thing on either on the back porch or like in the front yard where you can grow like vegetables and stuff, but like I just I can't stand grass because grass just <laughs> uses water and that's all it does is just yeah. a freaking waste. But you just yeah. do uh the box beds. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do is a box bed. Yeah, that's what there's, Mao has. There's a uh, there's a retaining wall, uh, like in my in my backyard, and it's like it's raised up, and there's like just enough between the retaining wall and the fence that there's a um there's like a, a bunch of um, like it's it's not a good amount. Like I'd probably be able to plant like ivy there and have it look good running down the wall, but like um, but <laughs> you know at some point I got to get out there and clear that out because it's it's filled with weeds and I and i don't want the weeds getting into my precious precious lawn but um but uh i the day i went out there to do it to like go and and start like pulling them out the first weed i pulled out a giant spider crawled across it's like i'm gonna wait till winter (laughs) uh i don't i don't mind the little critters i do they're a lot more venomous here (laughs) (laughs) you're right In Texas, yes. More, I mean, like any more than where I am. The, in the, the North Southeast? Carolina, the North Carolina, uh, yes. I mean, I do, guess. Do you in have scorpions? La- okay, we well, so technically in the Carolinas we do have scorpions, though I personally have never seen them. I've never seen one. See, we like, have hey, uh, I've seen like a few scorpions. And I have yet to see an armadillo. I feel, I feel uh, uh, like cheated. <laughs> Armadillos are like, adorable. They're dude. great, they're, and they live they live in and around the area that I'm, that I'm in, and I've never seen an armadillo. Like in in South Carolina, I mean, I'm in North Carolina now, but in South Carolina, we had all four venomous snakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, copperhead, like water moccasin, um, the last cottonmouth, and uh, coral. What's the last one? A oh, coral snake, right? Yeah. yeah. So the last, um, the last place well you say did you say you, you listed uh copper you listed cottonmouth and water moccasin those are the same snake you missed rattlesnake oh did i oh i missed rattle are they the same Rattlers. snake i guess yeah. i guess it's it's uh it depends on where you're at the dialect because like i've i've called them i've seen i've seen both i've called them both yeah those are the, those are just different names for the same snake ah, fair and enough. the last the, the last place that we lived in south carolina our garage just had just a, a lot of black widows in it so uh-huh. like a Freak lot widows, of black dude. widows Freak and dog. i there was not there was an occasion because they lived in the garage and hey garage that's fine that's where the bugs are have fun have a little buffet you live your life <laughs> there was a time where i did find a black widow in the house and i i considered briefly what to do with this information because i was like well if I tell Mal, 
she's not going to love that. <laughs> but I have never seen a Black Widow up to this point in the house. There's a relatively high concern, like chance that I never will again. So maybe we just don't share this information. Bla- and Black you know Widow. What? Yeah. I, I didn't tell her. Black Widow. Except she and probably knows Brown- now because she listens to the podcast. It's <laughs> yeah. well, we moved, and there's <laughs> and the, this place is spider free. It's fine. We uh we get like these really big, beautiful banana spiders that make these awesome webs outside. Like I don't mess with them because they're they're just harmless. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the yellow and black them. ones. Yeah, the yellow and black ones. They're they're yeah. so pretty. Or um, weavers. They are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, those are good too. Like I I love spiders. I love all spiders except for two, and that's a brown recluse and a black widow. Because they can both kill you. <laughs> like you ever, I, I just I love them. Have you ever played the uh, the game um, Grounded? Uh, no, but I've I've heard I've heard about it. Uh, or Orb Weaver is like one of the main enemies in it, and like they they, I don't know how aggressive they are with other insects, but they make them out to be so aggressive in that game. <laughs> and like to the, the the funny thing is like there's an arachnophobia mode in that game. I don't know if it's still um if it's still uh, um a thing in it, but. It's like it's basically like a it, it's a slider and it like it it locks onto like certain parts of the slider and as you go down more of a chain so like the first one is that it gets rid of two of the legs in the spider and like it it pretty much goes all the way down to where the the spider the spider is just two spheres that's it <laughs> it's like it's like a black box it just says spider on it like if mm-hmm. you, like something didn't load in TF2 or something <laughs> just a giant error flashing yeah just the error <laughs> We had one of those big orb weavers that uh, I, I couldn't have been the same one because we had it over the course of like years that lived behind my parents' house. So I, I'm sure there was just like it, different ones kept building a web in the same spot, but they're gorgeous. They are, however, huge. Yeah, I don't want to touch them. I don't want to go near them. I, I like, respect them from a distance. Like I'm going to say a diameter of like five inches, which for some yeah. people hearing that they're going to be like, holy crap, that's a very large spider. It is. It is. Although if you live in, you know, parts of the U S where you can have like tarantulas, then I guess it's different. Or a scorpion. All right. Let me, let me tell y'all a, let me tell y'all a story. Um, whenever I was living back at my parents' house, this was back in like 2006. Um, I was, I was 16. I was running out to uh, my parents' car to go and get something it was pitch black it was dark it was like uh one o'clock in the morning um i used to stay up very late (laughs) i still do a little bit but i was running outside and uh nobody had been outside or had gone through the front area all day long and or all night long i would say all evening long and whenever i came home that day there was nothing there but whenever i went out that night a banana spider had built a massive strong spider web. And whenever I say strong, the reason why I say that is I walk straight through it face <laughs> I first. That okay? was the case. I walk straight through it face first. And it was like, I was walking into fabric and I could hear it rip and enclose my freaking head in a spider. web. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever screamed as loud. I'm a loud mother I don't think I've ever screamed as loud as that day. I remember I woke my parents up from outside because it was like one o'clock in the morning. And they were like, what the heck were you doing outside? I was like, I was going to get something from your freaking car that I left in there. Oh, God, that was the worst. Um, that was my worst spider incident. I do have one other one that's really quick. Um Whenever I was, whenever I was coming, arachnophobia warning to those. Yeah, arachnophobia. Yeah, can we move off this topic very quickly? Sorry. Uh, Yes. uh, So really quick, picked a pair off a tree, and there were spiders in the pair, and that's all you need to know. (laughs) And and I was driving whenever I figured it out. (laughs) That was fun. Fortunately, when um, you know when my friends are with me, they don't have to worry about finding anything because as the six and a half foot tall friend i will find it <laughs> that you know <laughs> on top of that if you're in a large group and everyone gets separated they can meet at you <laughs> dude it's true e- erica at a convention is a nightmare because i can't find her <laughs> <laughs> 
I was gonna she's, say. You might want, if she's listening. You might want. You might want to describe what you're talking about quick. She uh, she knows. She absolutely knows, and she uses that to her advantage sometimes too, which is kind of funny. She's she, she'll she'll like sneak off uh, to like go and get me a present, and I'm like, where the frick are you? I, <laughs> I can't I can't find you no matter where you're at. So I have no idea where the heck she was going. Is that is that the boys? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's just it, everybody. It, no, it's in, it's just uh yeah drawings of of us um, well us and and various guests and Dan gotcha gotcha and a bunch of John Z emotes. I'm just describing this for the uh, for the audio listeners since we brought it up. I, yeah. I, I, oh god. I was gonna say I will tell you short people in addition to having no reason to live they can really like <laughs> go wow. through they can go through a crowd like very quickly and easily. And the, I just recently saw this um, because uh, we had went to a barcade in Raleigh and I was standing on one side of the barcade with Haley and she's like, let's go play ski ball. And I was like, OK. And she just kind of morphed into the legs of the crowd. It was a wild <laughs> experience. It was a very busy barcade and she just kind of disappeared. And I watched it happen, and I, I, it was like I blinked, and I just saw, and meanwhile, I'm, like, trying to, like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> and, uh, you yeah, know it, it was a wild, it's that, it, was, it's it, was, that, it was a wild experience. The higher up on the body you get, like, the shoulders are wide, so there's a lot more you have to, like, maneuver around, but legs, legs are, are, are skinny, so, like, if you're short, you can just, like, dart in and out of them, like, uh, like the majestic deer. Uh, in a forest, and then uh, and then you just get to the ski ball on the other side. Yeah, like I, I got to, the, I did eventually arrive at the ski ball, but then she was like, "Well, what took you?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm, <laughs> I had to get through a crowd of like 50 people. <laughs> there was a lot of people. I can't just go through people's legs." Uh, by the way, guys, my uh, my threat of taking you guys to uh to Cidercade when you're down here in Austin still stands. Oh, I'm down. Good. I, you don't have a choice. It's a threat. Oh, it's a I'm good down. time we, threat, but it's still a threat. Yeah. But what, what if we like the threat? That's fine. Huh. It's still a threat. It's going to happen whether you want it to or not. <laughs> it, then oh, it's okay. a, I'm taking you to cider cake. So does that make it an ultimatum? If it's like a threat that's okay. Like, what is a threat that's okay to us? One a that promise? doesn't kill us. <laughs> I guess a, I guess, yeah, I guess a promise. Well, a promise could also be threatening. So now, now I need to figure out a word for a non, like a non-threatening, a non, yeah, non-aggressive threat. Yeah, non-aggressive threat, or, or like, or, an, or a positive threat. Yeah, a positive threat. Yes, you are gonna have a good time, and you are gonna like it. I am going to bake you cookies, and you will eat them. God, it's just, it's like I don't know. Is there a word for that? Positive reinforcement. An oath. No, <laughs> an oath, an oath, oath isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, I mean, oh, shall then decide a cade under thine oath. Oath is actually quite good because oath is a promise to uphold something, right? So <laughs> it's that not a is blood oath, Chad. <laughs> so that's a good threat. A good threat is an oath. I agree with this. Okay, so a good threat is an oath. Well, it's like a yeah. Well, no, an oath, but. A threat is a promise. A threat is a promise that if you do A, I will do B. Oh, a vow! It's a vow. Because you're your vow. Yeah, because I mean, vows you're, can you're still bowing. be negative. Because like I vow to kill your entire family. Well, no, that becomes a it's... threat. It's a promising threat. <laughs> a, a vow that gets dark is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, well, <laughs> all right. Will the bride please read her wedding threats? <laughs> The, the wedding threat. Oh my god! I don't know, I man. Mean... See, see, listen. This is the thing. This is this is a uh, this is a brain teaser that I like. This is something I like here. I mean, like, it's, there's probably like a word for it in like another language, like how we don't really have a word for. Well, uh, <laughs> there's a few of them like that. It was like yeah. Schadenfreude, which is like laughing at other people's misfortune. And then oh, let me see if I could find what it is. You know what? Never mind. I'll, I won't find what it is, but I will describe what the word is. It's a word in Japanese that this that um is basically the word for post nut clarity. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh God! I, I what is it? Uh, Here we go. Japanese post nut clarity word. It is uh, k 
Kenja Taimu. Kenja Taimu. Ah, uh, so, so, it's so, clear time. Something, yeah. Okay. The, the period and, and rela- of relaxation and focus after ejaculation. Semicolon. <laughs> post-nut clarity. Incredible. <laughs> the Japanese uh, are so far ahead of us <laughs> as a culture. I'm, I'm embarrassed, uh, to be honest. Because it, it's, it's such a true moment. Like, it, it is a true thing. Oh, God. Since we're talking about linguistics, I'm going to bring up something that recently... Cunning ravaged, linguistics? Stop. <laughs> that recently ravaged our... Um, our, 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 our friend group. <laughs> I really wish um, you didn't use the word ravage after I said well, it's too late. It's already, <laughs> it's already out of my mouth. I would like, so I, I'm, I'm going to ask all of you a question. Mm-hmm. What is the writing utensil that you use that contains ink? Oh my, uh, <laughs> Steven, I was here for that. <laughs> okay, well. And, and, and you're now you're dragging poor Dan into this. Listen, no, no, it has nothing to do with Dan. This, this is, this is a new group. I'm just. Bullshit! <laughs> i'm just curious i'm just curious so you okay so one once again the question was exactly tell me what is a what? writing utensil you use that is filled with ink i'm assuming the uh, trick answer is pan are you looking for quill no no i just nope. want to i just want to i i want to hear you say pen <laughs> Why do you want to hear me say that? <laughs> you, that that'll make sense in question two, but but what's, what's, okay, what's your answer? It's it's a pen. Okay, and what do you mm. call the thing that you would uh, put on your shirt that has a little needle on it, so it, it for like a badge or something? A badge, a button. I'm trying uh, to get you to say pin. Okay, a, a pen. badge. Ooh, ooh. Okay, it's a pin. What's next? <laughs> okay, let's revisit this. Let's revisit this. What what was the first thing? Uh, a pin. And what's the second thing? A pin. Hmm. You're P-E- pretty close. There's a P-E-N yeah. and a P-I-N. There's two different things. Correct. So when we did this with our group, I'm gonna be this all started. Here. This all started because when we heard Dan say those words. To most of the group, not all the they group. They sounded to most, identical to most of the group. They sounded identical. And this is a real thing in linguistics. It's called the pen-pin merger. Oh. Uh, and some people say it in a way that to others, it sounds the same. There were a few people in our group that heard the difference when Dan said it. But then there were other people in our group that did not. I was one of them that I was like, oh, it sounds like you're saying the same thing. No, I, to- I totally get that, though. Because like a pen, like a writing pen... And then a push pin. Yeah, There's a so, little bit of a difference. Yeah, you actually, honestly, it sounds very similar when you say it to me. Also, yeah, it's, no, yeah, but no, I understand were, the difference now. When you're when you're talking about the writing utensil, I actually hear you saying P I N. That's the, what I hear you say. Huh? Yeah, you you say it, Jared. Like you said it twice. Just then pen, and then you said pen twice, but you said P N and pin. Like you, you yeah. got like a, a slight hang. Yeah, on there's the e. like you can you can kind of get the e out of the pin whenever I say that, but yeah. then it's like it's more it, <laughs> ironically it's more sharp whenever I say pin, like the push pin, but not the like the writing pin. Pin. Yeah. Now you got me saying it freaking weird. Well, I right? could, <laughs> well, when you said it there when you weren't thinking about it, I can kind of hear like there's it, it almost it almost sounded like there was a little bit of like like a very tiny eye. Yeah, so, like, so yeah. here's the thing, though. I was on guard because of the fact that I thought that he was going to make, like, a ha-ha wiener joke. Like, <laughs> I oh, thought no. the same oh, thing. So I'm like, the where's the, the IS the coming pin. in here? Where's the is? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The 15, the pin 15 club. Let's yeah, go. The, the, the pen is mightier. Um, the, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's one the of those things. <laughs> <And> the, it's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that, like, it's, it's very interesting, right? Because there's actually multiple words like this. Because once I brought it up, um, mm. we, were, we were looking in the comments, and there's people <laughs> that uh, were pointing out that for some, C-A-U-G-H-T and Caught. C-O-T. Ooh. Caught. Yeah, Caught. I think I do that. Yeah. So, John, huh. say those words. Caught. And caught. Yeah. I could hear the difference. The second one was was uh, the act of catching something, right? Nope. Wow, okay. Then I was completely wrong. 
The first it's, one said this. I caught one something. Said I'm gonna go sleep in my cot. That time I heard "caught" better, but that's probably just because you were using it in context. All right, I got I got another one. Uh, COD, Call of Duty. <laughs> I, was, I don't see, hear a, I don't hear a difference at all. I, I'm like, <laughs> wow. Uh, what, is, what is the actual different way of saying caught and caught? Because I've always heard them phonetically the same. I always think of like, so um, <laughs> the way I pronounce it is that the, the bed is like C-A-H-T, caught. Um, but the, but like the catching something is like C-A-W-T, caught. And so here's, huh. the, here's the most important part of this. The most important part of this is that there isn't like a right way. Right. That's no. not how yeah. language works, right? Yeah. It's just an interesting thing to hear that didn't regionally stop, didn't stop us from calling out Dan incredibly like, like <laughs> a lot during when, when we I, found out about I that. I feel bad that Dan took it as a personal attack. It was not a personal attack. It's just something that I find very, very interesting. Um I actually got a text from Mal just now, and she <laughs> said that she said there's another one, and she's real curious to have Tom say it specifically, but the woman's name, Mary, and then Mary, like marrying someone, and mm -hmm. then Mary with an E, so like Mary Gentleman. Are those words phonetically the same? All three Marys. To me, yes. Mary, Mary, and Mary. Yeah, okay. I, can, I can agree with that. But like... I would I bet it. I bet it does change when you're not thinking about it, though. Honestly, I mean, the big thing is that even if people say these things the exact same, right? Because I, I agree. Like for Mary, 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 like pen and pin for me are very different. But also, context is king. Like if you're listening to yeah, someone yeah. in a conversation, you will generally understand what they are referring to. If someone mm -hmm. says, uh, if someone says we're going to stick a pen in this, you know that they mean pin. Yeah. Yes. Or that they... There was some hesitation there. <laughs> or that there's, like, some really weird metaphors that they use. <laughs> yeah. The English language, and language in general, is such a fascinating thing. Like, just overall. Like, the fact that we're able to communicate with, like, sounds coming from our mouth is just so weird to me. But very cool. Let's invent a new language. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I can't believe you said that. What the heck? Bruh. It's very offensive. Very offensive. <laughs> the thing that you said. <laughs> what was that thing? I have no idea, but it sounded offensive. He jumped into that <laughs> so fast. <laughs> we were we were talking this morning about on, on Breakfast Stream about um, linguistics, and we were talking about specifically words that were invented that are very regional, very specific. And and the best example that we came up with, I think, was cattywampus. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? So cattywampus is a southeastern term to mean like messed up or crooked. So if something has huh. shifted from its place, it might be all cattywampus. Um, it's a very fun phrase some people use it to describe uh diagonal so hmm. like if something is across from you like if you were the uh an intersection and you were talking about what was on the other side of the intersection from you um some people use cattywampus or kittywampus for that don't worry um, babe the clinic is cattywampus <laughs> uh I'll, there was this is it stems from like a uh, a website that we were looking at recently about regional uses of that phrase. A lot of people would just say diagonal, like it is diagonal for me. Some people say um, kitty cornered or cat cornered, um, like Mal grew up using kitty cornered. Hmm. And uh, on that list was cattywampus. And I was like, that's fine, but also that's not really what I use. I mean, I probably or. wouldn't use cattywampus anyway, but if I was going to use it, that's not the the context in which I would use it. It would be if something was like screwed up, hmm. then it's, you know, it's, it's all cattywampus. I'm pretty certain I might be wrong about this. Uh, the, the reason why I even know that that word exists is because there is a, um, like a challenge chart pack on in the groove Two called cattywampus. Mm. And it's like, it's four songs that have a lot of freaking crazy modifiers. I can't remember if it's cattywampus or another word that's big like that. 
that is just weird, but I'm pretty certain that that's where I know that from. Interesting. Am I would I? have assumed that you would have heard that word like being in the Southeast, but yeah. it, it is something that you don't, I guess, run across all the time. My, uh, my real estate agent was from California and he used Caddy Wampus all the time. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, back where I'm from, Newfoundland, we have a bunch, like our, the language there is very interesting. There's a bunch of terms that they seem so weird, but like they make sense. Like, what do you think a hang ashore means? Hang ashore. Hang ashore? Hang ashore. I have never heard that. Is it, is it like, uh, is it a noun, adjective, or verb? Is it literally the words hang and ashore and means to not like leave land <laughs> yeah the is word it... hang the letter a and then sh the word shore yeah it's all one word hang ashore does it so have it's... to do with water let me take a guess i have no <laughs> idea i mean that that's that would be my assumption right like if you have people that are doing like fishermen right i'm, and I'm gonna say you were, you were gonna tell them you were gonna hang ashore <laughs> i'm gonna say it's Similar to the word wait. All right, y'all got your guesses in? <laughs> Bro, I have no idea. Go that's ahead. Our, that's my guess. It means a lazy person. Oh, a hanger. Oh, so it's, okay. it's a noun. Yeah, I thought it was a verb going into it. Yep, it's a noun. Huh. It's a noun. A lazy person, a hang ashore. That's interesting. See, these are these are things I love. I love to to hear these little words. Like, because I've never heard that in my life. That's completely new. We were talking this morning about jeet. Don't know what that one is. Jeet is did you eat? Oh, <laughs> but jeet? just J E E T. That's is uh, that a, that's is a, that a nickname Western thing? A nickname for Vegeta? <laughs> jeet, be. no, I can Yo, see that. Yeah, you, you make the sound it's like jeet, jeet, jeet. Hey, jeet. There's there's one that comes from uh, West Virginia. It's uh, frigid air, which is just. Isn't that it's the a brand of a refrigerator company? Yes, yes. It's a refrigerator, but um, I had somebody call it a Frigidaire, which I had no idea what the frick they were saying the first time I heard it. But um, now it makes sense now. It makes me think of like the evolution of uh, of language as well. Because Nimrod didn't always used to mean like someone who was stupid. Nimrod is like a is like a mythological hunter. I, lo and I because, love the word Nimrod. <laughs> yeah, and because and because of Bugs and because of like Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunny became more associated with somebody who was dumb because Elmer Fudd was a hunter. Mm. That's interesting. <laughs> what? Because he wouldn't he wouldn't call him a Nimrod. He, he'd just be like, "Hey, what's up, Nimrod?" Hmm. Yeah, that's that's like language evolution in action, but like through a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, but I mean, like, it's it's interesting how it's like, I guess, like the the documentation of it is more interesting to me than uh than like how it actually evolved, because because yeah. just the like the popularity of of a cartoon and the fact that we have evidence that the that it evolved in such a way where like, you know, people are calling each other Nimrod, you know, as an insult as opposed to referring to the mythological hunter. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting. So now I have a question. I'm going to shift it a little bit. When it comes to Looney Tunes, what is the first thing you think of with Looney Tunes? Are Bugs you Bunny. talking about just like, like I was going to say just Bugs Bunny in general. Well, Road, like Road, other Road than a character. and Wile E. Coyote. Okay. Well, oh, a, a very... no, that's all so, folks. Are you, are you talking about like a, like a specific joke or a specific line? Like what comes to mind first? Like, like a specific topic or like something that a, uh, that an episode was based around music music comes to mind a lot with with those ones so the 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 two that get me are rabbit season duck season and the barber of seville mm. the barber like, of seville is very good yeah the barber of seville short is one of the best pieces of animation ever i love that so much <laughs> they're like that that episode is like the reason why i know that song exists i forgot which one they uh way like which one exactly they did uh, it for, but it was like the the musical where Elmer Fudd is like the the Viking is like with my spear and magic helmet. <laughs> yeah, killed Wabbit. That one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. I can't. I can't remember what's. Uh, well, I mean, there was a bunch of songs they did in that one. Um, I mean, they basically went through that entire musical. Yeah. It. What's Opera Doc? Is that right? Mm. 
Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember what opera like they they were parodying. Oh, gotcha. Is the is the way is the is the opera just called Ride of the Valkyries? I don't. I mean, know. that was what ki- that was what killed the wabbit. Killed the wabbit. Killed the wabbit was too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is which is one of the best things. <laughs> just him with that with that uh, that W inflection, so funny. I always think wait, back wait. to like how many how many like old Looney Tunes cartoons really like shifted in terms of like the norm of like things that would happen. Like I, I think back to that one clip that goes around on Twitter often where it's like. If you try to take a step across that rope, I'll cut it. And the gorilla pulls the entire cliff over, like with the with the rope that's like tied up. <laughs> yeah. Like just how much they like. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Where where it's like they they defy expectations in that regard. Subverting. Yeah, they subvert ex- expectations. expectations so much, and it's just like, and it's weird because like after a while, it just becomes the norm. Like you you could you could like if you watch enough Looney Tunes, you could set your watch to like what's going to happen in in uh, in in certain things. Yeah, Looney Tunes is very good. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it, but for a while, Mal and I, <laughs> Mal and I actually wanted to watch all of Looney Tunes, like starting at the beginning, and we got like a few years into it. Um, not that we watched for years, but we watched several of the like the first years of it, mm. and um, eventually we stopped because it's. It, it's not that the early stuff isn't good, but when you think of Looney Tunes, you generally think of like more of the well-known characters, and it it was taking a long time to get there. <laughs> like there was a short with like Porky Pig and like a oh, short. Oh, you were with watching Daffy Merry Duck Melodies, which was a lot of stuff. Yeah, way mm-hmm. back when. Yeah, we yeah we started in like whatever the '30s, and it was and an they just interesting had, like, what, whatever lesson. whatever topics they had available to like to do is just what they went with and it was it was wild yeah. yeah it was it was cool it was it was a nice little history lesson but also eventually we just we stopped <laughs> <laughs> i i really wanted to get to um some of the more well-known stuff maybe at some point we'll pick it back up but my my favorite character as a child was always roadrunner and um like i dressed up for halloween as roadrunner i think more than once which is a i must have really liked him um, hmm. but I always loved Roadrunner and, and Wile E. Coyote and, and that entire experience and, uh, and all of like the Acme creations, which I guess showed up in more than just the, the Roadrunner cartoons too. Oh man. The, uh, the one that comes to mind, the, that you just reminded me with like a fast character was, um, it was the specific Speedy Gonzalez cartoons that had slow, po- slow poke Rodriguez. Because <laughs> there's one bit where like the cats are sitting out, it's like where it's like, you know, you probably have better luck catching slow po- poke Rodriguez. And the other cat's like, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna go get him right now. He's like, no, no, wait, wait. And he like runs around the corner. He's like, no, I'm trying to warn you. And you just hear a gunshot, and he goes, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to tell you, slow poke Rodriguez. He packs a gun. <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a timeout in Tucson, um, where we saw a bird cross the road. And my buddy Steve was with us, who, who's from Tucson, and and I was like, I was like, is that bird? A, and he was like, that's a road runner. And I was like, that is so different <laughs> than mm. what, than what I wanted a road runner to be. They're small. Yeah, like I knew in my head that there was not like an ostrich sized thing just running through Arizona. Like I knew that, but that also said- it was very it was disappointing. <laughs> That said, if you saw a cassowary running at you at the same speed as a roadrunner, you'd probably get out of there. <laughs> yeah, it is, that's, that would be concerning. Dude, I like I I would never want to meet one, but I love cassowaries. They're like living dinosaurs. What what are they called? Cassowary. C A S S O W A R Y. I have to look this up. They're cool. They're they're really cool birds. They are vicious looking though, and and like very ornery birds. Are they like related to emus or something? I think so. They're they're they've kind of got that same body type. They have like a horn on their noggin. Yeah. Jesus. They're awesome. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this before. Love cassowaries. Again, would never want to meet one. <laughs> I'm scrolling through the Wikipedia page and there's a photo of cassowary feces containing traces of seeds and I thought to myself briefly same 
<laughs> I'm like, of course you would. <laughs> well, listen, if you if you eat a poppy seed bagel, then you will test positive for opium on a drug test. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. I can't imagine... I mean, at this particular point in my life, I can't imagine uh, taking a drug test for anything. Do you imagine eating a poppy seed bagel? Uh, yes. I could. There do we it. go. Heard it here first, folks. Stephen does opium. <laughs> <laughs> that right there is a leap, my guy. That's what I like to call a leap. Oh, God. So speaking speaking of animals, um, I was watching a streamer the other day. And um, he just completely like derailed and uh, like went off the game. He was like, all right, we're going to mix things up. He pulls up a um, he pulls up a tier list of what animals could kick my behind. And <laughs> it was it was so it was so satisfying watching him go through each and every one of the animals like he and, and one of the things was 50 50. Right. It was a 50 50 thing. And he put sharks on 50 50. Right. Like a, a like a great white shark, and he and and his chat was blowing up. It was like, no, frick you! There ain't no way. Fifty fifty, that thing would kill you. And he's like, what if I was in my front yard? And he was in my front yard, like like that type of deal. And it was just like it was so funny because like just figuring out like him him trying to figure out like what would actually kill him in the in in like a really funny way. Like I want to do that one day. Like I want to, <laughs> I want to go through different animals and just see which ones would kick my behind or would I kick their behind. If that makes like, sense, is the is the implication that you have to like be engaged in combat with the shark? Because if it's in your front yard without water, then yes, that is a 50-50 If you have to touch the shark, exactly. However, however if uh, if if it's just the fact that it's like you and the shark are in the front yard, you know, do whatever, then you just leave the shark alone and it dies. Exactly. So it's a 50 50, right? If you're in its situation, if you're underwater with it, you're gone. Like there's no freaking much, like there's no chance really. Um, but then, but then he got to like a hippopotamus. He's like, oh, this thing would kill me. <laughs> and then, yeah. And, no, hippos are, hippos are aggressive, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, the, one of the options was I would be too scared to fight this thing. And it was at the very, very bottom. So that's where he put a hippo. He's just like, yeah, frick that next animal, please. Don't want yep. anything to do with that. Oh yeah, yeah Hippo, like um, it's also built like a tank. Yeah, yeah. they can't. So. They can't. They they exist primarily in water, and they can't swim. <laughs> they're just dude. They're just asserting dominance. Like they, that is their entire life. Like meaning is to assert dominance. They they like they hang around in in there, and if they happen to sink, they just push off the bottom and like and like essentially jump <laughs> in the water. <laughs> Hippos are metal, man. Oh my god. They're wild. They look so cute. Have you ever seen a baby hippo? The next Earth update needs to nerf hippos like hardcore. No, well, listen, it, it, the, strongest, <laughs> the strongest of animals can't uh, is probably isn't going to do much against a poacher. Oh, yeah, true. So, uh, you know, in fact, give them give the hippos guns. Yeah, yeah frick it. Buff the hippos. <laughs> replace well, I've, re replace I've tusks been saying for re years. Replace tusks with guns. guns. Yeah. Hashtag I just think I hippos. just think hunting would be a lot more fair if the deer had rifles. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's just turning it into the most dangerous game. <laughs> like legitimately. John, what what animal would you give a gun to? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that every night, Jared. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to give it a more fair chance, what animal would you buff, John? Buff cheetahs? No, sorry, uh, <laughs> cheetahs are already like uh, insane. Well, sorry, cheetahs, I was uh, reading can, there too. Cheetahs can run really fast, but not for very long. A T Rex, yeah. yeah. A T, you would buff a T Rex? What with I like an extra a life? With, no, with well, I give him a shotgun, like you said. I just give him a shotgun. He can't <laughs> aim it very well. He's got the tiny hands, but like, yep, he, he can't <laughs> aim very well. He's gonna, have, he's, he's, he's gonna have issues reloading. But that's why it's a shotgun, though, because it doesn't need to aim very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, but he, he has to learn how to put like the little cartridges back in, and that's like that requires a lot of like hand-eye coordination. I have faith in him. I have faith I would, in that T Rex to hold a shotgun and use it right. I would give a desert eagle to a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see him slowly pulling the trigger. <laughs> I have a lot of warning. 
part yeah you have you have a lot of warning going up to it. the other thing too is that when he pulls at the recoil so strong he like spins around in the branch <laughs> i think i would give a buff to water bears tardigards tardigards uh or tardigards tardigrades whatever they're called um yeah, the water bears, because I feel like with just a small buff, they they would actually rule the earth. Because yeah, they have you realize like we are this... basically screwing over humanity by doing this, right? Yeah, but it keeps things interesting. <laughs> keeps things we could use some humbling. This is literally Jurassic <laughs> we really Park. Could. This is just Jurassic Park. <laughs> we really could. I mean, just there's just a lot like those little guys are incredible, and and sometimes I've read about animals like this even like cockroaches they 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 can survive all of these different things well and i'm just the, like jesus christ if y'all were bigger we would have maybe a problem the problem <laughs> with the problem with uh with tardigards though is that they can survive very niche things like like a lot of like normal stuff that wouldn't normally kill a lot of animals kill tardigards but like their their claim to fame is that they could survive the vacuum of space and like radiation not much else yeah. outside of that Bro, John yeah. gave a T Rex a shotgun. Like we, we've gone off the rails here. I think, as we as we are, really, we the slot with the deagle I'm, wasn't one off the rails at all. <laughs> I mean, I mean, listen. All right, T Rex with a shotgun versus a sloth with a deagle. Who wins that fight? Sloth T-Rex with, with a shotgun. deagle is my cover band name. And I'm <laughs> right now, so please do not steal. What do you cover? Does, does it like, do like, you cover does your logo? Thing? I can't even say it. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I can't say it. I was gonna. What do you? What does your band do? Do they just cover Counter Strike music? <laughs> Every yes. song ends with terrorists they co- win. They, 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 they cover. They cover Eagles songs, but very slowly. <laughs> I would be okay with that. Do, 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 I've do, got do, 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 a peaceful, <laughs> easy. Oh my god. <laughs> Feeling <laughs> the, the slowest hotel California coming. Get up at the hotel, California. <laughs> sounds very sad. Ah, <laughs> uh, because that song is so happy normally. <laughs> well, this is different. This is like, oh, I feel really bad now about Hotel California. <laughs> I felt bad this before, is, but this is new. This is the opposite of the Chipmunks. So wait, do is. we get? Do we get everybody? John would give a shotgun to a T Rex. I give a Deagle to a uh, to a sloth. Was it Steve that said he give a gun to Tardigards? Tardigrades. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give him a gun. I just make them big. I'd make them like the size of dogs. Well, they are called water bears, and what is a bear but more dog? All right, let's just make them the size of actual bears. That seems more go. fair. Oh, oh my god, god. That, would, that would look... The, the best part is, like, that would look horrifying. It would, dude. It really... If, if you look up a... Fo- I mean, I know some folks might not want to see photos of these, but if, you, if, you, if, you're, not, if you're okay with it, look into the water bears, because they, they kind of look like a critter out of Silent Hill. <laughs> they really do. They have, like, six legs, and they have, like, this weird, like, like ra- very round mouth. It looks like it looks like a little bit like Birdo, like the the mouth does. Not they're very cool. Yeah, they do not look like Birdo at all, but the mouth <laughs> definitely does. <laughs> yeah, the mouth does. Yeah, no, they're not. They're not like <laughs> Birdo. Uh, so I have to answer the question. Um, I would give ants a knife. Ooh, absolutely a not. Knife? Absolutely that's, not. That's <laughs> those, uh, which kind of ants? Because you're essentially describing fire ants. Uh ooh. Yeah, I guess well, you're right. No, fire ants are already stuffed out of their freaking skulls as it is. Like Jared, Jared, would you want all of the ants to work collectively together to hold a human-sized knife, or would you want them all to have <laughs> tiny ant knives? You know what's funny is that I was I was hoping that you specifically were going to ask that question because that <laughs> that popped in my head, and I had a feeling that Stephen was going to actually say that. You um, know me so well. I I don't honestly I don't know. I would either give ants a knife or um oh god. I would give dogs vocabulary, probably. That's the buff that I would give. One is one is like one is chaotic evil, one is chaotic good. I can tell you exactly what uh what uh dogs are saying already when they're barking. (laughs) Hey! 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 
hey, like an hey, actual, hey. like an actual vocabulary, <laughs> not just hey. Also, like I don't think that ants benefit a whole lot from not like ants are already dangerous. Like, yeah. Depending on the ant, it depends on the ant. But now if they're you, super dangerous. If you fall into a fire ant bed, yeah. you might be screwed. <laughs> it's it's such buy- a, it, it's such like a, a small amount of like their 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 venom that makes it like itchy and feel like you're burning, but enough of that can put you in anaphylactic shock. Well, no, no, here's yeah, the you thing, can though. die. You can actually die from fire ants <laughs> if you fall into a bed. No, I was so here's the thing. Like the idea behind that was to give the like one of the worst buffs ever. Like like something that you're just like, holy frick, the makers of this game really need to nerf that character, as it were. Uh the worst thing I could think of was giving ants knives. <laughs> I mean, you can't we, you can't do that to a bee because a bee already has a stinger, right? Like, or are, like are a wasp. We, are we limited to animals on this weapons thing? <laughs> well, I that was, get, that was the what point. do you what do you have in mind, Tom? I'm down. Uh, I want to give the the trees in the Amazon chain guns. I want to give the slushy machine at the Seven <laughs> Eleven like ammunition. I, I, <laughs> which, listen, listen. We're not when, doing when a great you, job at saving the rainforest, so they have to save themselves, all right? Save themselves, man. You go to get your slushy, and there's just a machine gun that fires into the cup. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's bullets made out of, like, concentrated slush. They could probably figure that out. That's, like, that. that's on par with, like, those cartoons that show, like, Doritos being used as throwing stars. <laughs> oh, God. It's like whenever there's a food fight and they like they have like the different thing like like uh like usually when they when it's like okay what what kind of gun could we make this food oh bananas they're <laughs> pistol shaped so it'll just have them be single shot pistols <laughs> they, they just shoot out of the uh <laughs> like the actual core of the banana just shoots out and all you're left with is a freaking banana peel is the, is the peel yeah I mean that's, which you that's, can that's, then use that, as another weapon it's like a the, perfect two shot that's that's what the but there was the banana gun in Smash Ultimate which did that. Yeah. You fired one explosive round and then you had the banana peel uh, left over. Yep. Speaking of weapons, <laughs> I discovered something in my community that's been going on for a long ass time. Oh, I saw this. When, whenever somebody new joins my Discord, my community will post a bunch of hammer gifts and will just say that they're like they're being bonked with a hammer for being like the new person. I thought it was going on for like for four years and I was shocked at that because it was going on under my nose. No, it had been going on for eight years under my nose and I didn't know about it. (laughs) Eight years. That is half the time I've been doing content creation. This has been going on and I didn't know about it. So that, were they were they just like initiating like bonking or yeah, were they like, like, like or? it was it was, a, it was like a, a weird little like uh, uh there weren't like I wouldn't call it like brigading or whatever but just like whenever a new person came in they would see like because whenever someone new joins your Discord and they post in general yeah. there's like the little sprout next to their name that shows that they're new and um, and so like when they see it they'd be like oh you guys know what time it is and then just hammer gifts wait is it oh my god that's a thing I didn't is know the that sprout thing you never noticed that. No, I never noticed it. Huh. Well, that's cool. Oh, because I use it on mobile. It doesn't show up on mobile, does it? Hold on. I think it does. Let me check that out, man. Give me a second. Let me pull out my phone. Hold on. Eight years this went undetected. No, it doesn't show up on phone. Huh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I got to point this one out. The ants with knives drawing, but the (laughs) knives are like 10 times the size of the ants. Sandwich, thank you. And that's accurate because they can lift like 50 times their body weight. It's perfect. Sandwich, you are a precious treasure. My God. I wonder if they can swing it, right? The knife? The knife. Can they swing a knife? I don't know. Well, yes, they can swing the knife. Down. Mm. Eh. Eh. I'm going to cut some cake. Eh. (laughs) A very tiny cake. <laughs> you know, Jackson, you the drawing of my... the drawing of the T Rex reloading the shotgun. Uh, I love nature buffs. What Hashtag if we gave... nature buffs. What if we gave snakes legs? That was a just, bit in Rick and Morty. Just to just to be kind. They seem like they're doing all right without them. Like considering, like I mean, I guess we we already have snakes with legs. They're called they're called skinks. They're called blue tongue skinks. Lizards. But uh, but no, the uh, there's a bit in Rick and Morty where like they're infiltrating a snake compound, and um, Rick hit one hits one with a ray, and, and the snake grows like these long spindly legs and like starts panicking, can move, and he turns the gun towards uh, the other snakes and goes, "Anyone else want legs?" And they just drop their weapons and slither away. 
<laughs> I'm happy with the animals being how they are. <laughs> what can we give a, a, a giraffe could use a flail. <laughs> He's got to hold it with his mouth, though, right? Well, no, uh, or like, oh, maybe like attached to his head. <laughs> because the way, have you ever seen giraffes fight? They're like swinging their necks around and like bashing their heads into each other. Yeah. Yeah, so like, so that, but like with a flail attached to it. Bruh. Okay, that's metal. Giraffe flail. Yeah, giraffe flail. Instead of giving the animals weapons, I mean, what if we gave them musical instruments? I'm and down. Then, like, well, oh, I, I'll, I'll do you, I'll do you one better, uh, Stephen George. Um, I propose we give, um, I propose we give uh, uh, rats wheels. <laughs> okay, why so don't they can animal get somewhere quicker? <laughs> so uh, Vsauce actually asked this question: Why don't animals have wheels? Isn't that like a? It's like an interesting thought. It's like it it would make them move faster. I mean, technically, technically, Miraidon has a wheel <laughs> for a Pokemon, but you know, Miraidon definitely. Karaidon has a tire goiter. <laughs> you know, I've never that, ever wanted to hear that statement before, that, but no. that, that, is, that is what I called. That is what I called Karaidon leading up to the release of that game, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with Scarlet because old tire goiter has has grown on me. Tire goiter. Old tire goiter. Yeah. Oh God! I I wanted the oh God. What are they called? Um, I wanted the oh man, dang it! I'll remember it in a minute. Just go ahead with that. Was, was it a version exclusive or? Uh, no, it's the futuristic one. It's a word. Protogen. Right I wanted the protogen dragon. That's what. Oh I wanted. yeah 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 yeah. God, that's the word I was looking for. I was just like, leave me behind, man. I gotta figure out the word. When I when I first played that game. The, you know, the first thing that happens in that game is you find the, is that you like, you know, you find the legendary and it's injured and you give it a sandwich. Mm. Well, the entire time I'm thinking like this, uh, this thing is like this, like majestic beast. And it's, and, uh, so from then on, my trainer had the title that I gave to him through the eyes of Coridon as child of ham. <laughs> because, it, because he gave him a ham, ham sandwich. He's like, oh, this is delicious. You truly are the child of ham. Child of Ham. And, and the entire time, like whenever Karaidon and my character were in a scene together, they would just be like, what are you doing, Child of Ham? <laughs> that wouldn't have been my Ham. first choice, but I love it. It's Child of Ham. I don't know what to tell oh, you. So a Child of Ham. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Child of Fanta. Don't, don't lie to us. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? Orange Fanta. <laughs> are we claiming Fanta colors, by the way? Because I got dibs on purple. I love grape. <laughs> that that defeated Sai. Steven has been forcibly assigned orange. <laughs> either of either of you want to take your picks? I don't know what flavors there are. There's strawberry, pineapple, uh, lemon, strawberry, and berry. Yeah, so you got red. Bro, I'm gonna have to fight you over the grape Fanta, honestly. Ooh. Either grape or orange, honestly. Don't mix them together, though. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I've mixed sodas together all the time when I was a child. Uh, dude. Think, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I, the saddest part is that <laughs> the thing that I have in my left hand is a can of Fanta. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I have so been drinking a can of Fanta for the entire duration of Disco and Link. Uh, it's, like but, it's like your comfort drink now. No, it's it's not. There's nothing. I've been drinking a hard <laughs> seltzer. Uh, I ain't drinking nothing. I, the good news is that I've been drinking one seven and a half ounce can for the entire duration of of this. I, I'm sipping it like whiskey. And not like I've three. really made it last. <laughs> oh, oh, Stephen, could you please put that in a very fancy highball glass and just sip it like a fine bourbon? <laughs> could I? I guess. Will I? Do you no. have a, a highball glass? I would assume that we don't actually. I'm I don't gonna, think we do. One of these days, I'm gonna get you a um uh, a set of highball glasses and one of those um one of those machines that makes ice cubes into spheres. Those are so yeah. cool. We have wine glasses, and that's it. Because like Mal drinks wine, and like I don't drink, 
So we have wine. And if people come over and they want, you know, something, then they got to put in like a regular glass. Steven, I'm going to introduce you to the wonders of the tequila sunrise when I come down there. <laughs> Tom, if I, have, <laughs> if, I, if I have never drank... <laughs> up to this point i don't believe that your arrival will usher in a new era in my life <laughs> i will probably just continue to not drink <laughs> it's been it's been going pretty well for me restaurants are so much cheaper hmm. i finished the can i uh i have not learned to like fanta anymore but the fanta is almost gone <laughs> Well, as far as you know, you haven't well, checked the PO until box. the next group visit where you have to buy another one of those flats. Oh, I'm never buying that again. That's never happening. I'll take uh, strawberry Fanta. Strawberry Fanta is pretty good. John, you, you've been, you are currently getting into a fight with all three right. of us. Oh, yeah, you're right, I am because you did pick strawberry. Frick. Yeah. Uh, dang it, dude! You, you've right. got berry and pineapple left, unless there's more flavors I couldn't. God, think I'm of. looking. I said lemon. They have, they have apple, yellow. You know, I'm just about to say frick this and go for the uh, the Warhead candy soda <laughs> instead. I, I, dude, I really want to try one of those. Screw you taking Orange Fanta from me. I'm going Orange Sunkissed. Dude, I don't even know. Y'all you know, took all the good flavors, man. I Dang just it. googled Fanta colors because I've lost control of my life. <laughs> it's in your history. You're not making forever. chocolate pudding at four in the morning. Don't be dramatic. Oh, not yet. God. I've lost all control of my life. Lost all control of my life. Bro, it's weird that you bring that up because I had a dream the other night that I was like living next door to the freaking Rugrats family. <laughs> 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 I haven't thought of that show in like a decade, man. Like and specifically that... Stu and Dee Dee or like all the characters were living in one house? No, no, just Stu and Dee Dee's house. Like it was so weird. Uh, it's funny that you bring that up. There's apple flavored Fanta. I might have to go with that. Oh, they have they have green apple. They have um, lemon. I didn't know that. Peach. Fanta apple is the color of piss. <laughs> oh. Presu presumably, Mo it tastes better than that. I, I would hope so. Mountain Dew has a specific flavor at KFC that's like peach flavor, and that looks like piss. <laughs> sweet as lightning. As it's it's uh it's it's sweetened with a uh, it's peach and like honey flavored and it looks like pee. I find it so I'm on the Fanta website right now because I've lost all control of my life, and the so there's there's orange, strawberry, pineapple, grape, and then orange zero sugar. Why is it that orange is the only one that has zero sugar? The other flavors aren't popular enough to be sweetened with aspartame. That's fair enough. That was a what, very what? that was a very concise answer, and I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I, want, I want you to guys to, to like look at the 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 Mountain Dew, uh, uh, Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning, just because like even in its marketing pictures where they try to, their best to not make it look like pee, it looks like pee. Mountain Dew's been losing their freaking minds. Mountain Dew is like the Taco Bell of the soda industry. They just, just add random freaking crazy crap to their drinks, dude. Uh, on Google Images, there's one picture of Mountain Dew sweet lighting and lightning in a mason jar with a name on it, and it, that makes me super uncomfortable. <laughs> Mountain Dew sweet lightning only at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yep. What really? Yep. That's... It's a it's a K, it's a KFC specific flavor. What? What is what does it taste like? I wonder. Peach. Wow. I've had I've had it before. Peach and smooth honey flavor, huh? Yep. <laughs> Interesting. But the point is that it looks like pee. I I need to try just to say that I've tried it. The flaming hot Mountain Dew. I need. I want to try, try that. that too. That yeah, because I've I've had like um I've had alcoholic beverages that are like flavored similarly that where they're just like oh we're also gonna squeeze in some jalapeno juice into them and they look <laughs> and they um and they're they're delicious they're spicy. I've never that had doesn't that. seem like it'd be terribly refreshing. Well, you're also getting the bite of the alcohol, so like a little bit of spice goes along with that. Holy cow! <laughs> Jax, that's incredible! <laughs> the flail giraffe, dude. It's a flail giraffe! That's a Pokemon. That's, that, 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 that's, that's giraffe when, when the, the you know the the um the giraffe head wins. 
Because <laughs> it's the giraffe head and the chain chomp head. Yeah. That was a good evolution. Like that was a, that was a really cute idea to just yeah for for Rigoraf. yeah give give her a a hoodie you know yeah I was like the idea where it's like like the two of them speak to each other and so it's like <laughs> and, and so it's like oh, we're in quite the predicament here what do you think Outerhead <laughs> oh yeah that's a good idea <laughs> oh frick. You're trying to kill me, Tom. <laughs> I, was playing, uh, I was playing Tears of the Kingdom before this. I was at a part where you had to like flood a bunch of uh, uh, of areas, but the every time I did it, I was standing right in front of the thing uh, in front of the drain, and so every time I did it, like the water would pour out, and you wouldn't see Link at all. You just see the area filling up. But I assumed water was just rushing over him, so I was just there going like. <laughs> Oh my god. That's the sound of angrily drowning. <laughs> or Nailed speaking it. or Apparently, speaking according, according to chat with the emos, that's the sound of Captain My Captain. <laughs> uh, only only a small time left until me and Mao get to drown an entire new generation of Pikmin. <laughs> an entire new speed well now you could you there's a type of Pikmin you could just throw in the water and they won't captain my captain. Also, there's new Pikmin that are ghosts, so we've already killed them once, and we can maybe drown them a second time. Yeah. They're back. They're back for vengeance. Perfect. Uh, did any of y'all play the uh, the Pikmin Bloom game for your phone? No. No. Mm. No. I enjoyed it for a little while. It was a nice little way of um, uh, getting some extra steps in. What did, he, what did you even do? Like, you just walked around and that made the Pikmin Bloom? Was that it? basically yeah uh like you know how you know how there's like pokestops and stuff like that they would have like um blooms that were like like flowers there and you go there pollinate the flowers and then uh more people that walked by would be able to get more pikmin from them stuff like that you would then um you would get little pods and after you walked for a little while they would pop like pop out you get new pikmin it's just like it's basically pokemon go but omega simple like mm. you don't really it's just you get a couple of different types of pikmin I mean, that seems like that could be interesting. If you were already going to be, like, walking anyway. Yeah, it was, it's, a, it's like, it on. it's what I like to call, like, a walk enhancer. Like, it just gives you something to do instead of just walking. Oh, a sentence enhancer. <laughs> and, yeah, um... like, like, beep and beep and beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> When I um when Pokemon Go first came out, um you know it was having that trouble like all the time because they, you know, classic Nintendo they never expect their titles to be as big as they are. Yeah. Um, so it was having a lot of like issues starting off. Uh, but one thing I noticed is that like I downloaded their other game Ingress, and uh I looked on there, and the map data they used for Ingress was very similar to the map data they used for uh for Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. But on Ingress, you could see where certain things were further out. So I'd log into Ingress and see like where there were like these little blips on the map that were further away, and then log into Pokemon Go and then go over there, and then the, and a Pokemon would spawn immediately. That's that's actually super smart. I never thought of doing that. That was how some people got Pokestops built too. They'd try to they'd apply for them in Ingress, and those would automatically add them to Pokemon Go. Mm. Oh, that's super smart. Huh. And then they got, and then Niantic got big enough from the Pokemon Go success that they decided to make an anime out of Ingress. Huh. And then, they, like last week, they had to fire a ton of people and cancel a bunch yep. of the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say um, that <laughs> there's a, there was a meme. Uh, we were never closer to world peace than the summer that Pokemon Go came out. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody was going to the different places together. Like, I remember there was a picture of uh, one of the main boardwalks in Atlantic City. It was just filled with people, like, enjoying the game. Just so, like, that was cool. Because, like, there was a lot of people in my downtown area that I had never met, but we ended up talking through Pokemon Go, which is super cool. A lot of the uh, what, after I moved here to Austin, a lot of the uh, the um, uh, big events like the uh, the community days was like specific Pokemon. 
Um, you, they would like, like there was, there was one person who was just like, uh, yeah, you know, every time one of these events is going to come up, I'm going to rent a, uh, a bus to take us around the city. And you know, you guys just pay me 10 bucks and we'll ride this around the city, like looking for legendary Pokemon. But like, there were other times where they had the like, community days where, uh, you go down to the capital and just like everyone was there. And because like the, uh, IV stats were, based on like where there were server side like based on spawn location you know you get someone uh occasionally being like yo there's a there's a uh, perfect iv like whatever it is over there and like everyone would rush towards it and be like you know and like uh and like client side was was where like the shiny pokemon would be so they'd be like yo yeah the, like this pokemon's like really strong did you get shiny did you get shiny did you get shiny and like you'd hear like the occasional people like cheering that they got a shiny yeah it was nuts yeah the community day i've only done a couple of those but they were always super fun um, I enjoyed the raid stuff too a little bit whenever it first came out, like the mm. Reggie Ice, Reggie Rock, um, that type of thing. That was fun, but I didn't have a lot of friends that played it at that time. Like, I'm still only 33, like level 33 in the game, because like once you get to level 30, it becomes astronomically harder to level up. Mm -hmm. Um, as I'm pretty sure just about everybody in here knows. Um, but like there were some people that I knew that were just at level 40, like in the first couple of uh, months that it came out. I'm like, what the frick, dude? That's crazy. <laughs> I got to level 40 like a week before they announced they were going to increase the level cap. Oh, wait, did they increase it? Yep, it's now 50. Oh, my God. How and, I, and, there's, there's, and on top of like all the experience you need, there's also special conditions you have to meet before you can level up. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'm curious, actually. I don't know what level I am. I have not opened this app <laughs> in so long. Um, let me take a look. No, I don't want to do Adventure Sync. <laughs> it kills my battery. <laughs> yes, I accept your terms of service. Thank you. <laughs> Lord. 33. We got, we, got, we got Pokemon Sleep coming out soon. I'm yeah. excited for that. Yeah. The beta's in Canada now, so I could download it if I wanted. Ooh. Is it only for Android right now? Uh, I think it's on both, but I think they're just like slow rolling it out. Mm -hmm. I've got yeah, the Pokemon. I've got the Pokemon Go Plus Plus pre-ordered, so I'll just set that down to me when I sleep. Plus Plus. I wonder if um if I'm sleep's gonna, gonna uh, utilize i or like Apple Watch create or um connectivity based on based on all of my like sleeping habits that like i just know myself for i'm gonna get all the pokemon that normally have insomnia as their ability <laughs> like a hypno <laughs> yeah what i get this time hypno damn it what i get this time hypno damn it what i get this time hypno damn it i'm drowsy y yes i am thank you for asking <laughs> yeah. what'd you get primate oh that's new vital spirit can't be put to sleep damn it <laughs> accurate I mean, is that when? When is that game? Pokemon, uh, like this this month sometime. Ninety seven, ninety eight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Pokemon Sleep is supposedly this month. Okay. But like I said, in certain countries right now, you can start the beta. Yeah, it's uh, iOS is summer twenty twenty three is what it says. So. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. See, uh, Tom, I thought you were joking whenever you said Pokemon Go Plus Plus, but it's actually Pokemon yeah, Go Plus Plus. Yeah, it's a thing. Plus. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a badge this time instead of a watch. Oh, that's funny. It's flatter, so it's easier to carry. I got mm -hmm. the uh, I got the Pokeball Plus as well when I got um Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Yeah. Which, hey, if you ever wanted a free Mew, it's fifty bucks. That uh, doesn't sound free to me. Not at all. It is not, John. That free Mew was worth it for me because Mew's like it's my a Mew at no addition. It's a Mew at no additional cost. The Pokeball Plus. <laughs> Either way, though, I tried playing. Um, Let's go Pikachu and Eevee with that con with with the Pokeball Plus controller. It's tough. It the is. There's no. There's no way to like see. There's there's no way to know wh how it's aligned without looking at it. And sometimes I'll like I'll fidget with it and it'll shift. So I'll go to move up and I'll move like to the right. I'll be like, "What the heck?" I'll look down and it's like sideways in my hand. How did that happen? Um, the you you have two buttons on there total. It's like it's it's so it's so difficult. 
it's much better to just go controller. Yeah. It's a neat little it's a neat little thing though. I always like little Pokeball accessories. Sorry, I've been doing research. I know we need to wrap, but did you know that there is both Doritos <laughs> that were Mountain Dew flavored and Mountain Dew that was Dorito flavored? Mm-hmm. Yeah, both of those products existed. Anyway, <laughs> I just think that we should make the water bears big and let them have a chance at the earth because I just feel like we kind of screwed it I, all I up. I think we're done with the earth at this point. I think is what Steven's saying. He's just done. <laughs> give yeah. up. Yeah. Remember what exactly, I said yeah, earlier exactly. about give giving up? up? Give up it's on okay. earth and your It's okay lawn. to give up on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> give up. I think, you know. Maybe humans had a good run, but when we start just Did turning we? Doritos into Mountain Dew and vice versa, like. Okay, here's this... uh, devil's advocate here on that one. I bet the uh, <laughs> I, I bet the Mountain Dew flavored Doritos just have lime in them and they taste zestier. And I bet the Mountain Dew that's got like Doritos in it is just like the flaming hot one that has like a little bit of spice to it. They were nacho cheese. It was nacho cheese flavored Mountain Dew. I stand corrected. It's it it was apparently only on like college campuses that they were like doing a rollout to try it and it was hated and they never turned it into a product that was at mass market. It definitely sounds like a product that just would not fly. There was a there was a time when they were just putting spicy stuff in everything. They had spicy M and M's. Ew. Ew. They were delicious. It was like it was. It was, like a, it was <laughs> It was like a sweet mole sauce. Uh, I can't follow you on that one. All right. Should we wrap up then in that case? Before yeah, we start yeah. talking about more Doritos monstrosities? The 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 cursed side of food. <laughs> Have you ever had a casserole with a crust as mashed up Doritos? I've had a Doritos Locos taco. <laughs> I've had many of those. All right, so here's our talking points for this month's episode. Lighted by gas. Howdy there, neighbor. Living in my baby. Spider dial. <laughs> Pen pin merger. Hunting wabbits. Buff animals. Color flavors. Drowning ghosts. Tom, what you got going on? I've been playing Book of Mario Thousands of Doors, which is a it's a mod for Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, which replaces a lot of the dialogue with dialogue that was translated over and over again in Google Translate and then back to English. So far, Rogueport is a, is a town of prostitutes. Goombella is a prostitute. Uh, Toadsworth is a pimp. Uh, let's see. And uh, and Coops is uh, is trying to be God and kill his dad. Sounds pretty normal aside from, to me. Aside from that, I'm still playing Tears of the Kingdom. Getting toward the end because uh, I want to try to get it done before Pikmin 4 comes out. Uh, what else have I been playing? Usually uh, a lot of the usual multiplayer stuff. Tomorrow I'm playing Mar uh, the new Mario Kart 8 tracks uh, with friends around 6 p.m. Central. So uh, give that um, give that a watch. Oh, yeah, and all the names are different, too. Goombella is Goombell. Um, Professor Frankly is Honesty Professor. And uh, Coops is Carbon. Just like me, for real, for real. Just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> oh, yeah, the other thing, too, is that uh, is that uh, Peach is teaching tech more about physical love. Anyway, uh, Stephen, what do you got? <laughs> Whew, that was just a lot emotionally for me to hear. Um, I, uh, hmm, we're doing a lot of the same stuff. I uh, do the Zelda on Fridays. Uh, this Friday will actually be different. This I I haven't announced this, so this is kind of new. But this Friday will not be Zelda. It'll be something that's not Zelda. I can't tell you what it is because I don't know what it is yet. But uh, this Friday won't be Zelda. Uh, on Thursday, I'm doing a solo stream in the afternoon. And uh, otherwise, it's breakfast stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. My schedule's fun now. I got a fun schedule. Because I added solo streams every week. I've been doing those, like, in the afternoons on Tuesday or Thursday. Mal's doing her streams, so I'm doing those in the evening. I'm like, this is great. 
I used to just eat breakfast and play Zelda. Now I eat breakfast and play Zelda and then sometimes play a different game. You have to have little things to look forward to. <laughs> um, my normal schedule is, well, I mean, it's the normal thing. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, drum streams, 4.30 uh, Eastern. I uh, want to give a big shout out to uh, everybody who picked up a little drummer bunny plushie. We sold 350 of them, which I was very surprised by. Like, uh, I was not expecting it to go that high, let alone even near the actual uh, completion bonus. Uh, but yeah, to everybody who picked one up, um, they will be uh, shipped out in October. And I very much appreciate y'all. And every uh, all of the uh, proceeds from that are going to charity as well, to direct relief. So thank you, everybody who picked one up. Um, other than that, I believe it is just regular streams until uh, Fan Fest, because I'm going to Final Fantasy Fan Fest uh, over in Las Vegas. So that's going to be fun. So uh, the, the end of this month is going to be I insane. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for me. Well, I had tried out a new schedule last week uh, where we did Friday, Saturday, Sunday instead of the usual Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and I liked it. So I was going to try uh, a different schedule this week where it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but have slightly shorter streams. And now due to something going on behind the scenes, I will probably be canceling a bunch of those streams. So uh, I don't know what the schedule is for this week. Thursday's out. Uh, Friday might be too, and then Reese gets home, I think, Saturday, so that might also be out. So I don't fucking know anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Schedule's up in the air. We'll, I'll talk about why some other time, but uh, it, it's been a thing. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll try the Thursday to Sunday schedule again at some point. So you gave up? No. Trust me. No. It wasn't that. Uh, Dan, what you got going on? Um, well, uh, Wednesday is uh, Mario Kart with Tom. Oh, yeah. Uh, so tomorrow? That's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that feeling so well. <laughs> um, where do you think I got it from? Yeah. Um, I learned it from you. <laughs> uh but yeah, um I guess I guess that's that's mostly it. Um I had a ton of fun with I tried out the crowd control with um Red Dead 2, which was super fun. But at some point I'm going to be trying the the Fallout 4. So That's it. I love it. Fun. All right. Special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and of course, our producer is Motion Dan. Uh, we have not successfully been on the first Tuesday of the month for like, what, the last three months? Four months? Five? I've stopped it's counting. It's been a bit. Do you think we can land on uh, August 1st this time? I have nothing planned for then, so that's, that's yes. That, for me, yes. Uh, give, uh, me a, give me a sure. moment, please. Actually, no, Jared's not going to be home for that because he's probably flying back from FanFest that day. So I will not. It. Uh, I will not be back on the first because I will be having my honeymoon with Erica um, in Vegas as well. So, yeah, I will not be there on the first. Y'all can do it without me if you want to. I understand. Second Tuesday of the month again, baby. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should change the iTunes description. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever. Uh, we'll figure it out. At some point, there will be an announcement for Disco Only, but assume it's either the first or second, likely the second. Uh, but thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you all next month. Oh, yeah, and in thousands of doors, they keep translating, come on to, I came. Mm. Thank you for that. I should have muted the mics <laughs> right then and there with that. That should have just been what, it. What Nothing was else was going to top that What was that Japanese that word from earlier? Yeah, what, yeah, what was that, Tom? Um, the, the I don't think there's clarity. any post-nut clarity from that. <laughs> Something just, Taimu, like Ken, Kenji Taimu or Kenji Taimu? We're learning so much. 
Thanks so much. Someone nope. said September will fix the, the discrepancy with all the second Tuesdays a month. Guess what PAX West is, baby! <laughs> we PAX just, West! We should just move it to the second and it'll go to the third. It'd be perfect. We'll, we'll eventually go to through the entire month and we will go back to the first. We just had to, <laughs> we had to delay so long it goes back to the first. And there will be less episodes. Shh. Happy three years, everybody.